Alright, what's up guys? This is Matthew Burns, and in this uh, series of tutorial videos, we are going to be building a persistence of vision display. Alright, I can't even see the camera here. Um, what this is, if you don't know, uh, persistence of vision display is uh, a display, it's a type of display in which you only have a a single row of LEDs and you spin it around really fast whether it be mounted horizontally vertically or whatever and you spin it around on a motor extremely fast and you blink the LEDs just at the right time to draw an image in midair um, <clears throat> persistence of vision is kind of self-explanatory here um, the all the pixels of the image aren't being turned on at the same time they're being turned on uh, in columns. First the first columns blinked on, the next columns blinked, the next columns blinked, the next columns blinked, and it'll draw the image in the exact same spot when it comes around the next time. So that is why it's called a persistence of vision display and what it is. We are going to be basing this project around the PIC16F870, which is an 8-bit microcontroller that has two full 8-bit ports, port B, uh, which you can see here, and port C, pin 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. <clears throat> uh, the difficulty of this project, which I'm not quite sure even if it's going to work at this point, but if you see this video online, all of the videos are online and it's working, so don't worry. Um, the difficulty, as I was mentioning, is that these LEDs, which I'm not done soldering on this printed circuit board I made, but these LEDs that you see here are uh, tricolor LEDs with a common anode and uh, three different grounds, one for each color, red, green, and blue. And I'm trying, I have 16, 16 pins and change to control these LEDs with, and I have 48 ground pins to deal with. So I was contemplating the best way to control 48, essentially 48 different LEDs with 16 and change pins. So, I thought the best way to do this would be to turn on uh, one time as it travels around, so like, let's say it passes by the sensor, which I'll get into this later, but we're gonna need a Hall Effect sensor. Basically, uh, I'll explain this in detail probably in its own video later, but just know for now that it's something that can detect which position in the rotation that it's at. So it starts drawing the image at the same time so the image doesn't drift around the circle. So, um, what I plan to do is have the six, have a transistor control the, the grounds, have the grounds of all the reds connected, the grounds of all the blues connected, and the grounds of all the greens connected. Uh, have the port C and port B send, uh, signals to the, uh, power, uh, to the anodes of all the LEDs, and then, um, in this way, I can use the uh, a transistor, I'm going to use a TIP31 transistor to control which color of LEDs is connected to ground, and then pick which LEDs I want to turn on from there. So one time around the loop, I'll turn on the red LEDs, the next time around the loop, I'll turn on the green LEDs, and the next time around the loop, I'll turn on the blue LEDs, and then the next time around, I'll start with red again. Now, where I see difficulty in this is that this thing is a persistence of vision display, and as it is, the image is somewhat transparent and somewhat dim because it's blinking the LEDs on at the right time to draw the image in midair. Now, if I wanted to draw an image in just red, and I turn the LEDs on, the red LEDs on, every time I went around the loop and just ignored green and blue, I believe this thing would work fine. But if I turn the LEDs are on, the red LEDs on, to be specific, every third time it goes around the loop, then it might be kind of dim, too dim to see. So that's my worry right now, but uh, I'll see if it works, and like I said, if you see this video posted online, it's working. So, um, that is going to be, I'll go through in uh, later tutorials, the uh, schematic that I designed for this, how it's actually going to work, I'll talk about the Hall Effect sensor a bit, uh, I'll explain Lorentz force and the Hall effect, but <clears throat> something fairly practical that's also very important to this is what's mechanically going on. Um, 
Obviously, you're going to need a motor to spin this thing around really fast. Um, I'm going, and one thing you might want to think about is this thing's going to be spinning around really fast. You can't have wires to going, going to something that's spinning around almost 3,000 times per minute. So you're going to need to have everything self-contained on the thing that's spinning around, or uh, have this, this thing be remote controlled somehow, or, <clears throat> sorry, I have a bit of a dry throat, or uh, uh, some type of brushings and, and contacts or, or a strip of metal that runs around here on plastic, and then brushing that connects to them so that you can uh, send power signals to what's up here that way without wires getting twisted around a billion times. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to have the battery mounted on one side and the LEDs mounted on the other, so everything will be self-contained up on this spinning platform. Um, another thing you want to think about, I current, or recently invested in a 3D printer, so I can make custom parts for my devices. Right now, I am working on printing uh, the piece that's going to hold the LEDs. So, that's all fine. Um, it'll work great, I think, but it's not really necessary. I've always had trouble with the, um, with the actual mechanical parts of my projects. The electronics always ended up working fine, but the mechanical parts I always had trouble with. It was always something crappy, like a homemade printed circuit board glued to a 2x4. So, um, I'm not really going to cover these parts that I am printing out here because that's not really electronically involved in any way but if you can find a way to put it together that's great because it's really not too complicated anyway we're just going to be going through the electronics in this so um, one other thing that I'm not going to go through in detail now but I am going to mention that we're going to use for this tutorial is a Hall effect sensor Mine is a digital vein sensor, so its output is digital, and it has a slot through the middle of it that you have to pass a ferrous material through. Um, I'll explain the Lorentz force and the Hall effect later, but for now, I'm just going to tell you that it, as you pass a ferrous material between the Hall plate, I guess you could call it, and the magnet, it will send a digital output through the signal pin on this. It's three pins, power, ground, and signal. And that will be sent through port A, the incomplete non-8-bit port on the microcontroller, as an input. And then uh, once the microcontroller senses that input, we're going to start drawing the image. This way it draws the image in the same spot every single time. Um, so that's pretty much all I plan to cover in this tutorial. This was just an intro. In the next tutorial, I guess we're going to go through um, the the code probably on the microcontroller that's going to uh, uh, draw the LEDs, uh, light up the LEDs in a certain sequence to draw the image. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.